an entire generation of North Vietnamese have been born and lived and died in the pursuit of one thing, a united Vietnam under communist rule. The North Vietnamese have never known anything but war. At CIA, we've just completed a study of their staggering recuperative abilities, bridges. This one was knocked out in a morning raid. Two hours later, some bamboo planks across a bunch of wooden canal boats, and there's foot traffic again. By 3 p.m., it's a pontoon bridge, strong enough for a fully loaded truck. A bomb knocks out a rail line. They call up the bicycle brigades. 500 men and women, some as old as 70 or 75, put the cargo on their bikes. Each one balances up to a 600-pound load across the frame. They wheel it across a jerry-rigged bridge to another train waiting to move it on south. Filling a bomb crater to make a road passable again. That's as routine to a school kid there as getting a malt down at the corner shop here. It's a first date. They have a brand of cigarettes, Mr. President, called Dien Bien Phu. That's their Yorktown, their Waterloo, where they defeated the French in 54. Reminders of war are in the most casual moments of daily life, in a smoke, Mr. President. They're heroes. The kid who was put to death for trying to assassinate Secretary McNamara last year in Saigon, there's a song about him. It's a top 10 hit. And Norman Morrison. Norman Morrison was the Quaker who burned himself to death in front of the Pentagon last month. A great hero. Hanoi just issued a postage stamp. Thank you, John. Thank you, Scott. A great hero. He almost took his one-year-old daughter with him. A baby. It's a miracle she was unharmed. Man was disturbed. Three young children are fatherless. Hero. So, what do we do?